Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another tier list using Tier Maker, this time covering the Chaos Dwarf unit roster. But before we get into the roster itself, I do need to let you guys know that this video here is sponsored by Manscaped. You guys know I've been partnered with Manscaped for ages. Absolutely love the product, love the company. I've been using the Lawnmower 4.0 for pretty much everything. I even gave myself a buzz cut with it. And this month is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, and Manscaped has partnered up with the Testicular Cancer Society to raise awareness. So they gave me a package with a cool shirt, which I'll wear on the next live stream that we do, and also some ball wipes to keep myself nice and fresh down there. So if you want to support what Manscaped is doing and get yourself some really nice men's care product, then click on the link in the description and get yourself 20% off plus free international shipping and help support a great company. Big thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Onto the actual tier list itself, I think that the Chaos Dwarf roster is definitely the most complex to assess out of any of the rosters that we've done so far, because they've essentially got two different rosters in their, in their faction. You've got the green skin units, which is a smaller roster, that uh, doesn't take up unit caps and these basically just fill up your armies when you're you, you can't recruit any of your really good units and then when it comes down to the unit caps with your units you have to be very careful with it because you're just not going to have an unlimited supply of armaments at least until way later on in the campaign and each time you increase a unit cap it's going to become more expensive to do it again and so sometimes creating a spread of different units is better than just spamming one unit actually that's definitely going to be the case but also there are some units here that's not worth increasing their unit caps at all. If we have a look at how it's how it's set up, some units are grouped together, like for example these melee infantry with the regular Chaos Dwarves and the uh, Infernal Guard. Increase a, un a unit cap on one of them doesn't give you one of each, it just gives you one of both of them total. So you could just recruit, for in this case here, 29 of the regular Chaos Dwarf Warriors and completely forego the Great Weapons, it's entirely up to you. Whereas, you know, you've got the Infernal Iron Sworn here, which has its own specific unit cap. And by by having a mix of these units, you're, of course, keeping the overall cost of every time you're going to increase it quite uh, relatively low. Whereas if you spam one particular unit, the cost sort of blows out of control. You've also got situations where you've got, like with the War Machines here, the Hell Cannons have got their own unit cap, so you don't have to worry about that one bloating out your cost too much. Whereas the other war machines, every other war machine that you've got, um, all takes the same unit cap. So if one of these units is significantly better than the others, or significantly worse, there may be only reason to recruit one of them, or no reason to recruit the other. And then of course you've got the bull centaurs over here, which all use up the same unit cap. So a lot of this stuff here needs to be taken into consideration. Then you've also got the Manufactory. Now the thing is, across the board here, you can get some really good bonuses for your units, but I'm not going to be taking them into consideration for this roster, or else it just gets way too complex, because essentially you can take a trash unit and give it a Manufactory upgrade and make it OP, so it can just completely skew things out of control with that. Um, every unit of, of the Chaos Dwarf is strong. Every single one of these units is strong in the right situation with the right upgrades. But it really comes down to this as well. What's cost effective and what you're going to get the most value out of compared to other units because it all uses up the same resources and armaments is just not going to grow on trees. And so using spending your armaments wisely is really what the tier list is all about. And that's what I'm going to get into. Okay, first up, we'll go into the green skin roster. So we've got this in essentially two different categories, two different tier lists, essentially. Good green skins, bad green skins, right? And then you've got the three different uh, Chaos Dwarf stuff here. Now, what this one really should represent is whether or not you should be increasing the unit cap of these particular units. So obviously anything that's in here, definitely increase the unit caps of those. And anything that's in here, it's not necessarily don't, either don't increase the unit cap of this unit or if it's sharing a unit cap, don't waste your unit caps with this unit. So anyway, let's get into it. So in terms of trash green skin, I can't think of anything more trashy than their laborer units. This is the unit that you recruit when there is simply nothing else available. They're cheap, they're unreliable, they're okay in auto resolve if you spam enough of them. Uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, the, the goblin unit is by far their worst unit in the roster. So I would never recruit the goblin units. I only ever recruit the, the orc laborers because while they are about twice as expensive, they're the only one out of the two that's able to actually dish out some damage. So it's got armor piercing, but 
their leadership in both cases is so bad, especially on very hard battle difficulty, that even when you've got units with contempt near them to try to boost their leadership, they're still unreliable. These are units that are going to your route at like three quarters health. So very unreliable units. Only recruit them when you just have nothing else to get. Then we've got the Hobgoblin units, which actually require a barracks. But the great thing about Hobgoblin units is that you can globally recruit them in one turn as soon as you get um, Gordar's Backstabber, and then all you need is just one barracks to sort out all your needs. Because the global recruitment of the, um, of the Hobgoblin units is really not that expensive. Obviously, it's a lot cheaper if you can locally recruit. So let's firstly go into the Hobgoblin Cutthroats. I think this is a good green skin unit. Uh, obviously... Even the best of the green skin units is going to be nowhere near as good as the actual Chaos Dwarf roster. But what makes the unit here good is like the value it's providing. You're not going to be able to just on turn one recruit 20 blunderbusses. You just you can't do that. So you're going to have to fill up your roster with some trash green skin. And even later on in the campaign, as you progress and get bigger and bigger and have more armies, you're going to have to fill some of these. Uh, these armies with some green skins or else your campaign progress will seriously uh, be stifled if you're only recruiting chaos dwarf units uh, it's, it's not good for your campaign if you if you've only got one army but like 100 settlements just because you're obsessed with only recruiting the best units right so the uh, the cutthroats these are okay melee units they're obviously not going to be as good as the chaos dwarf units here but they're way better than the trash green skins here they're, they've got a shield, so they've got some missile block, they've got higher leadership. This is just a standard melee infantry, essentially a tier 1 unit. Actually, this is a tier 1 unit. Um, relatively good value, costs about 100 in upkeep, but you can reduce their upkeep cost fairly significantly. One of the great things about Hobgoblin units as well is that as you get more wine resources throughout the, uh, the campaign, you will globally reduce the upkeep cost of Hobgoblins, so they can become very cheap at, later on in the campaign. So I think that you shouldn't snub your nose at hobgoblins. They're actually quite useful. Then we've got the archer unit here, which I think it's a, a robust archer unit. Obviously, this is not going to be able to compete with a high elf archer or <laughs> compete with a quarreler. But the trick with hobgoblins is just for every one unit that you're going up against, have two units of hobgoblins because you're not limited on caps. You're just limited in terms of money. And the Chaos Dwarves are pretty rich. If you're managing your campaign all right, you shouldn't have any problems with recruiting huge armies full of hobgoblins. And so, you know, it's a solid missile infantry. If it gets wiped out, no big deal, just replace it. It's just a, you just don't care too much about them, but they can provide you value, can manage to win you a battle here and there. And then we've got Sneaky Gits. Now, this is probably my favorite unit of the hobgoblins. Because it's very similar in utility to a Nasty Skulker, which is one of my favorite units in the Greenskin roster. So this one here is not just about good stats. It actually doesn't have good stats, but it's uh, it's got a lot of utility because it's a missile infantry unit. It's only got like two ammo, but that ammo is pretty good at like taking out big monsters like giants and dragons and that kind of stuff. Really bad at shooting at like small single entities like dwarf lords, but... You'd be surprised how much value you can get out of these ones here, especially considering they stalk by default, and they're really good at getting around the back of the enemy forces and, like, getting at their archer units. And they're anti-infantry, and they've got reasonable leadership. They're not quite as good in melee as the uh, cutthroats, but because they can stalk, they're less vulnerable to getting shot on the approach, even though these guys here have shields. I mean, they can't shoot at something they can't see. So I actually really like the sneaky gets, but they are significantly more expensive than these two. Then you've got the Hobgoblin Cavalry units. You've got the, the Wolf Riders here, which I kind of want to put in Trash Green Skin, but they're really not in the same tier with these two guys here. I think they're, they're decent units, but they don't have as much utility as the, the, the um, Wolf Riders with um, Bow and Arrow. I just think that this one here is better. And also, I don't want to have like 10 different um, layers to the tier list here. So when it comes down to the, the uh, good green skins, really, it just comes down to your personal preferences with the Hobgoblins. You can get good value out of any of these five units. This one's here, they're okay in melee, but obviously they're not going to be able to take on like Orc, Boar Boy, Biggins. This is never going to happen. Unless you send like six of these like, against one. But the thing is with them is that in terms of affordability, you can do that. These ones here are very quick. So as a horse, horse actually more like wolf archer unit, you know, fairly low range. You've got the same amount of range as a regular archer, which normally the, uh, the the mounted version has a lower range. But 130 range, flaming attacks, good amount of ammunition, and they can go into melee 
after they've used up all their ammo. You can get a lot of value out of these these ones here. My favorite out of the hobgoblins is the ho the sorry the wolf archer and the sneaky gets. All right, now on to the actual chaos dwarf stuff here. So the chaos dwarf warriors. We'll start with them. Uh, the shielded variant. I'm going to put that as a good chaos dwarf unit and the great weapon also as a good chaos dwarf unit so these is up the same unit cap i think you can't go wrong with either one of them it really comes down to this if you're going up against missile heavy enemies that don't have a lot of armor then this is a better choice but if you're going up against something that that doesn't have a lot of missile units let's just say you're going up against warriors of chaos then you'd be better off bringing the uh the great weapon variant because you're not going to be getting shot so much and these guys here will dish out significantly more damage so overall i think this is a good unit to spend your um your armaments on it's not overly expensive to increase the caps and just a good solid chaos dwarf melee infantry unit nothing too spectacular their utility their melee infantry you're not going to get them to get a thousand kills in a battle they're there to hold the line which you kind of do need with a, a lot of the units that you have in your officer so i wouldn't spam them in an army but you can get a lot of value out of them and then we've got the iron sworn units so i think that the sorry uh, the infernal guard this is the iron sworn um the infernal guard i'm going to put these as get me more of these now basically top tier unit there's a lot that you can do with infernal guard troops See, not only are they just better quality than the good Chaos Dwarf, uh, than the, 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 the Chaos Dwarf Warriors, I mean, uh, these ones here, they, they take two turns to recruit locally, but by the time you're starting to recruit these guys here, you can actually globally recruit them in one turn because of the various structures and global recruitment um, duration reductions. And you can reduce their recruitment cost quite significantly. But another thing that makes these guys great is that if you pair them up with an infernal uh, Castellan that's got the unethical trade, he reduces their upkeep cost by 10%. Also, there is a couple of landmarks and things around the place that will reduce the upkeep cost of Infernal Guard. So you can actually, it is possible to have Infernal Guard be lower upkeep cost than just the regular Chaos Dwarf Warriors. And of course, they're just straight up upgrades of the... Uh, of the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. They serve the same role. Shield, non-armor-piercing infantry, non-shielded um, uh, armor-piercing infantry. They're just better quality. But yeah, if you were going to spend some armaments, I would prefer the Infernal Guard over the regular Chaos Dwarves any day. Then we've got the Infernal Guard Iron Sworn. These guys here are... Actually, let me confirm that's the actual name. Yeah, Iron Sworn. Uh, these guys here are essentially the... The Chaos Dwarf version of Iron Breakers, and I really like Iron Breakers because they've got a lot of utility. They've got flaming attacks, which I actually don't like flaming attacks because there's so many enemies in the game that have fire resistance, and by comparison, there's very few units that have fire weakness. And usually the units that have fire resistance are like 60% fire resistant or something. So sometimes having fire attacks can be really bad. I know that they can slow down regen, but it's not really that impactful. But having magical attacks here makes this is the go-to infantry unit if you're going to go up against demon armies. In addition to that, you've got the canister shots here. That's really powerful. I think that's actually more powerful than the Iron Breaker version. And these guys here just hold the line really well. Uh, kind of expensive. And these guys here aren't increased uh, sorry decreased in upkeep cost from the unethical infernal castellan but still when you've got the money for them just a really solid unit so i like getting a lot of those okay then the missile infantry we've got the chaos dwarf blunderbuss these are obviously going to be get more of these now this is just a really solid uh missile infantry unit because it's it's a little bit finicky you can do a lot of friendly fire on your own troops but I've seen these troops, if positioned correctly, so it's really just a skill issue, I suppose, can easily get three, four hundred kills. I've seen it get 50,000 damage in a single battle. These guys here can just inflict so much damage. They're good at taking out single entities. There's really nothing that they're not good at shooting unless it has like 90% missile resistance. So they're good against everything. Just got to watch out with their relatively low range and their low accuracy. Just be very careful about the position that you use them in. But other than that, these guys here will win so many battles for you that would otherwise have seemed unwinnable. So they're really the best unit to recruit in the early stages of the campaign. And they're especially good for defending uh, like minor settlements and sieges because of their ability to just w work your way around choke points and just 
cause absolute carnage into enemy forces, as long as they're not into melee. That being said, they're not bad in melee, and they've got missile block chance as well, so they're really, really good. Then you've got the uh, Infernal Guard Fire Glaives. Now, I like these units for sure, but I don't think that they're as good as the Blunderbusses. Their range is comparable to Thunderers, so just like regular gun units. They've got flaming attacks, if I um, just go over to here and have a look at them. Um, they've got flaming attacks, which I'm not the biggest fan of, as I've said before. They are armor-piercing, and in melee they have anti-large, which is definitely good. Uh, but they are, they're also quite expensive. It's entirely up to you, really, when it comes to They're a good, good unit. I just think that when it comes down to missile infantry, the Blunderbuss just has a lot more value. It's like cheaper in upkeep costs, it's a lot cheaper to increase the unit caps, and you can just get a lot more out of them. It just really comes down to the range. And it's not like the 145 range is super long range anyway. They also don't have shields, and there's not really a whole lot you can do to boost that range. There is a the few things here and there with items, uh, but not that much. Okay, then we've got the Bull Centaur units. These are amazing units. All three of them go in to get more of these now. They all, all use up the same unit cap, and they're all more or less the same value. It really comes down to the rock, paper, scissors. Typical sort of monstrous cavalry choice, similar to what the Minotaurs have with the Beastmen. You've got the shield version, you've got the anti-infantry version, the anti-large version. I usually go with the anti-large version, uh, but because there's a lot of um, anti-infantry already in the rest of the roster, so you want to cover your bases with anti-large. But really, you can't go wrong with these units, especially if you're playing Astrogoth Iron Hand. Putting these into his army is basically a must because he boosts them by such a ridiculous degree that they be they kind of become OP even before you start adding in the uh, the the various upgrades from the manufactory as well. So that's probably one of their best units in their entire roster. So it's definitely worth getting these units, even if you're not going to put them in Astrogoth or if you're going to put them in somebody else's army aside from Astrogoth. Uh, these are really good units. The only real weakness, I think, to uh, Bull Centaur renders is that they're relatively low speed for a, like a monstrous cavalry unit. At 62 speed, that's not particularly high, uh, which means that they can get caught by other types of cavalry like Knights of the Realm that are anti-large and could potentially take them out. But they're so good in melee that even though you're not going to be able to run away from something that's particularly fast, you can probably attack it head on and do reasonably well. So their ability to pick and choose their engagement is a little bit low, but they'll win most engagements anyway, so they're really strong units. Okay, then we've got the flying stuff over here. All right, so the Great Taurus. I'm going to put this under a good Chaos Dwarf unit. It's kind of big, can get shot a bit. It's flaming attacks. It's, a, it's, it's basically a manticore that's flying. Actually, Manticles do fly. It's, it's flaming, I mean. Uh, there are some interesting effects when it comes to um, Great Taurus. They've got the Blazing Body ability. So the longer they've been in melee, they get uh, melee damage reflection and physical resistance, uh, which can be very helpful, but it's only active while they're in melee. Uh, but that's still very good. They've got a lot of fire resistance, which is good. But yeah, flaming attacks can be a bit of a problem sometimes. I do worry about how much of the Chaos Wolf roster has flaming attacks. Uh, it's not always what I want. Uh, but overall, they've got solid stats, but there's nothing too special about them, really. They're just a solid flying monster unit. Definitely doesn't belong in there. Get more of these now. Then you've got the Lamasu. A good thing about these as well is that they all have separate unit caps. So if you like one over the other, they're not going to break the bank. And also getting a variety of them will keep your overall cost fairly low. So it, it's good the way they've set this out. They're, they're quite high value in that regard. Uh, then the Lamasu. I'm also going to put this under good Chaos Dwarf unit. Um, this one here has higher melee defense than the Great Taurus, but it has lower overall health. It also has less armor-piercing damage, same overall weapon strength. Uh, but this one here is a spellcaster, so they've got um, Enfeebling Foe and the Withering, I believe. Let me just confirm that here. So yeah, Enfeebling Foe and the Withering which you get one cast of it, which you can upgrade it to two casts, I think, in the, um, in, it's either the tech tree or the, yeah, I think it's in the tech tree. And that's, that's pretty good. Let me just actually confirm that. Pretty sure it's in the tech tree here. Yeah, there it is. Number of uses for bound abilities. That's right. Just wasn't sure if it was in that or the, um, Tower of Zars. It's just so many mechanics in the Chaos Dwarfs, and I'm struggling to memorize it all at this stage. So, good unit, um, but not amazing in melee, so it's got some good abilities. The main 
ability that I think is really useful with the Lamasu is the ability to strip away magical attacks. So if you're going up against demon armies and you're using your uh, Kadai units, which have a lot of physical resistance and all their stuff are just bypassing it with magical attacks, having a Lamasu flying above and just stripping enemy units of their, mis of their magical attack, that is probably one of the most interesting abilities in the entire game. Uh, but yeah, they don't dominate the skies. They're not the, the strongest, you know. They don't have the blazing body ability. So they're not as good in melee, but their abilities sort of compensate them a little bit. Uh, I definitely wouldn't spam them in an army, but having one in your army can be very valuable. One or two. Then you've got the the uh, the Bale Taurus here. This is another really good unit. I'd, I'd even go so far as to say get more of these now. It's basically just a um, regular Taurus that's on steroids. This, this unit here is ridiculously strong, and it's also got a breath attack, right? So you've got... The flaming breath attack's pretty good because it shoots it very quickly. It doesn't sit there charging it up like dragons do, so you're not super vulnerable to missiles while it's going on. You've still got the blazing, abol uh, blazing body ability. they got more health. they got more stats. They're just a stronger version of the Great Taurus. So just a really bloody strong unit, the, um, the Bale Taurus. So that's why I put it under there. And of course, they're not using the same unit caps there as well. Okay, now for the Kadai units. All right, the uh, Kadai Fireborn. Um, I like these units. I'm going to put it under a good Chaos Dwarf unit. But you do need to be wary when using these troops. They can be a little bit squishy. This is essentially your demon units in your roster, where once their health drops below 50%, I usually try to pull them out of combat. Because uh, sh shortly after then, if their leadership drops too high... Uh, too low, I mean, they will um, uh, start to decay and banish really quickly. So that can really suck to lose one of these units. So they, with a lot of units in this game, you can just keep them in combat and then just when it routes, just let it run off the battlefield. Like, for example, the Bull Centaurs. You know, one or two of them will leave the battlefield and then that way it won't get wiped out. But these ones here, you have to babysit them and you really have to make sure that they're not going up against, like, large units. These are anti-infantry units. If they're going up against cavalry, not ideal. Um, even against units that have uh, flame weakness, because these guys do flaming attacks, you should be careful about if they're large. They're very much anti-infantry. Be very careful as well with missile infantry as well. They will uh, shoot the crap out of them quite quickly because they, they're they very vulnerable to it. Then we've got the Kadai Destroyer. Now, this is typically a unit that you would expect to end up in like the top tier. It's like their, their biggest, baddest monster sort of thing. However, in terms of the value and also you've got to take into consideration armament cost, I'm going to put it under good Chaos Dwarf unit because they're they're not super boosted in their roster but when we when we look at everything that they provide it's got a lot of stuff in their skill here but a lot of them don't do that much like it's unbreakable unless its hit points go below 50 percent you know it's got hellish frenzy when the hit points are higher than 75 percent which provides you know it's basically yeah it's just frenzy rather than leadership that one's focused on hit points they got a bit of physical resistance which you can boost f further in the uh, in this in the um, tech tree uh, but they are demons and the thing I I don't really find super great about Kadai destroyers is that they're not great at smashing huge groups of infantry they're they're good for dealing with single entities for sure and like monstrous troops but I think that this unit here doesn't really have a specific unit that it absolutely smash smashes and it can be taken out relatively easily by low tier crappy units, especially if you're outnumbered by a lot. So for example, if you're in a situation where you're outnumbered, which will happen a fair bit, and the enemy have just loads of trash infantry and trash archers, those trash archers, if spread out, will take down your destroyer very cost effectively. And so a really good unit like this, lost easily, can actually be detrimental to your army. Now, if you're going up against a super elite army, and you've got loads of these guys, I think that'll be fine, but you also got to consider that that's very expensive, especially in terms of the armament cost and getting those unit capacities up. Um, Drazoath the Ashen does make a pretty good Kadai Destroyer Doomstack, for sure, uh, but I just don't consider it to be a like an S-tier unit. Okay, now we've got the, the, um, the artillery. Actually, we'll do the Hell Cannon first. This is a great unit because it only has itself in the unit capacity there just we've seen hell counters before they're just good troops they complement the chaos dwarf roster really well these guys here will hold the line while these ones here blow the enemy apart they're good for sieges they're not great at shooting against single entities but typically speaking single entities aren't just typically very difficult to deal with but you have other units to deal with uh, single entities anyway you know spamming them in your army probably not a good, good idea but having like two three four of them 
I think that can provide a lot of value. So yeah, getting them into all of your armies can be very handy. Okay, now the the other ones here, all of these use up the same roster, right? Now you might be sitting here wondering why is there three of the Dreadquake Mortars in here? Well, that's because they, they all use the same unit icon, right? If I go over here, if I go over here, all three of them use the same unit icon for Dreadquake Mortars, for Iron Demon Dreadquake Mortar, and for Skullcracker Dreadquake Mortar. So that's, that's a little bit confusing, but uh, I will make distinctions between the three there. Okay, we'll get to the, those ones last. Firstly, the, uh, the Skullcracker. I think it's trash. I think it's complete and utter trash. The first and maybe the only unit that ends up in the trash, uh, the Skullcracker. The biggest problem with this one is that it's a tier 2 unit that comes in at the same time as as the Iron Demon and the Magma Cannon. You know, and it's actually more expensive than the other two as well. It is melee only, it's only anti-infantry, and it's not even particularly good at anti-infantrying. So this one here is, you kind of need to consider it like a chariot. It does a lot of damage on the charge for sure, but their speed isn't particularly quick. So getting them out of that combat can be a bit of a pain. They've got enough mass to push things out of the way, but if if, if things pursue you, it's hard to get out of combat. So, so they could be a very finicky unit. And when it comes down to it as well, it's all using, it's all using the same unit capacity. And I just think that it is the worst one out of all of these in here. So my recommendation isn't to not get war machines, definitely get war machines, but just don't waste your unit capacity with skull crackers. They're, if, I feel like they would be fine if it had its own unit capacity. It just shouldn't belong when in this big group here because it is by far the weakest of the, it says five, but there's actually more than that really. If you consider that this one here is essentially three three different units. So yeah, I, I definitely don't recruit any Skullcrackers. It's not that they're a bad unit, it's just that the other units are better. Iron Demons. Iron Demons are good. I like I like Iron Demons. So these guys here, they're anti-infantry as well. So if we have a look at them. The Iron Demons. So they're anti-infantry and melee. They're the same speed as the Skullcracker. They're cheaper in upkeep and they have a missile strength. That's actually pretty good. It's like a um, canister shot from like Empire Total War. Uh, I think it's a it's like a better unit. I, I'm really not sure why. Like they've got the same combat stats. Why the hell is the Skullcracker um, higher in upkeep cost? It doesn't make any sense. I must be just be missing something here. Same armor, same leadership, same speed, same melee attack, same melee defense, same weapon strength, same charge bonus. Why is this one here cheaper than the Skullcracker? It just doesn't make any sense at all. I just maybe it's because it's got Wallbreaker. I just don't think that that's that important. Maybe that's what it is that's uh, making it cost more. I just don't think that's worth it. And they've they've both got the ability here, more power. So I just don't get it with Skullcracker. Okay, then we got the Magma Cannon. This is a good good um, artillery piece. Here. I'm going to put it under good Chaos Dwarf unit here. Um, good against pretty much everything. It is flaming attack, so it's your longest range artillery piece. Um, its overall damage output isn't great, so you really need to keep the enemy at bay for a long period of time in order for this one to inflict a lot of damage. So the Dreadquake Mortars and the, um, the Hell Cannons will dish out damage a lot faster, but this one here is better, maybe the best out of all of their artillery against large units. A lot of the uh, Chaos Dwarf um, artillery is really just anti-infantry, where this one here is the only one that I suppose is anti-large. This um, It's reasonably accurate. Does a fair bit of damage. It's nothing spectacular. It definitely doesn't belong in. Get more of these right now. Okay. Then you've got the... What's it called? Death Shrieker? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Death Shrieker rocket launcher here, which has two different types of shots. We've got the Death Shrieker... Basically, the anti-infantry one, which is like a... Um, reminds me of the avalanche mortars, where they explode and then drop down a whole bunch of mortar fire on the, uh, on the unsuspecting enemies below. And then you've got the demolition rocket, which is good against structures... And while this one here is anti-large, it's really inaccurate. So trying to hit a target from a long distance is really unlikely. So 
basically, when it comes to sieges and I need to destroy walls, I'll use this one. Otherwise, I'll use the Death Streak Rocket, even against cavalry. And I won't use this one against, like, small single entities or just single entities in general. I just think this is sort of like the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. And while it has two different types of shots, one is clearly more effective than the other. I'm going to put the Death Streaker... Uh, rocket as a uh, as a good chaos dwarf unit then we've got the dreadquake mortars this is the cream of the crop here that so there's three different times there's the regular uh, uh, dreadquake there's the iron demon and then there's the skull cracker um, variant so first up i know they've got the same bloody unit card first up the regular dreadquake mortar so having a look at that one here we'll have to actually have a look this way the regular Dreadquake Mortar, right? So, upkeep costs 550. It says its speed is 60, but I think that this is one of those cases where the game is lying to you. This unit does not have a speed of 60. This unit has a speed of 20. It is ridiculously slow. So I think that's being a little bit deceptive there. The, the like, ammunition, the damage that these things do is absolutely absurd, but I actually don't think that it should be a Tier 5 unit. I actually think this one here would belong better at Tier 4 or even Tier 3 because of the other two variants. Even though they're more ex uh, more expensive, money is just not really that much of an issue for Chaos Dwarves, in my opinion. So I think with the regular Dreadquake Mortar, I would put it under good Chaos Dwarf unit, borderlining trash, merely because the other ones here both of them are get more of these now these are the ones you want to be getting right the sc the skull cracker version as well because the skull cracker on its own isn't that good but when it's got a dreadquake mortar on it yeah it's really good look i'd even go so far as to say that the best one is is definitely the iron demon right because it's got the same speed the the same upkeep cost right if you have a look at them they have 800 upkeep cost but at least the um the Iron Demon not only has the Dreadquake shot, but it's also got its uh, its canister shot as well, and it's good in melee. This unit here, I'd say, is like the quintessential artillery piece for the Chaos Dwarf. The Iron Demon Dreadquake Mortar. This one here is absolutely insane. It's quick enough that it can kite most enemies around. It's got enough ammunition that it can blow the crap out of an infantry-based army. It is not going to do well against large single entities, or just large units in general, so keep them away from them. Uh, so I wouldn't spam them in an army unless you were just going up against dwarfs. That way you can just avoid the, the um, dwarf warlords. Um, and you couldn't do much against um, uh, gyrocopters, but that shouldn't be the entire army. This one here is an amazing unit, so that's where I'm going to put it as S tier. But the thing is with the Skullcracker, it's good as well, because you're mainly using it for the, um, for the Dreadquake Mortar. It's just that these two here... And speed, where this one here, it's, I mean, it lies to you in the bloody unit card. It says its speed is 60, but it's just, that is not true. It's, its speed has got to be around 20. It's super slow. It's outrun by Nurgle infantry. I know, I tested it. So that speed, that's just wrong. Its speed is like 20. Where these ones here, yeah, it seems about right that their speed is about 60. And, um, of course, you can boost them with more power so they can move even faster. Really good units that can be boosted quite significantly, uh, significantly in the uh, tech tree as well. Anyway, that's the tier list there. As you can see, I think that the majority of the Chaos Dwarf roster is actually really good. And the only reason I put this here is because it just shares too many other um, uh, unit caps with better units, that's all. Um, I really like the system with the Hobgoblins. I think the Hobgoblins are great. I have full armies full of them, and I quite enjoy using them. I don't rely on them too much, but they're easy to replace. And these ones here, they I think they should be trash. That's what you would use them for if you just can't get any of the other ones. But I think that Creative Assembly have actually done an excellent job with the Chaos Dwarf roster. It's so rare for me to have so few units under the trash tier, and basically just the entire roster as good and amazing. So, yeah, I think they did a good job with that. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Uh, don't forget to check out Manscaped with the link in the description and the pinned comment. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys.